All right, so today being the only off day that I'll have for five, yeah, five in a row now. Oh, that sounds terrible. I uh, got the rest of the shop cleaned up. Got the parts from the 55 here put in the shed out back. And also managed to get rid of the ugly wheels that were on it. This is what I'm working on putting on the car. Now, obviously, with the fender wells that we have, I can tuck this under, but the studs on the, the rear end as it sits are not near long enough. But we have a solution to that problem, so stay tuned. All right, so I said we had a solution to the problem for the studs on the rear end of the 55, and that is going to be stealing this rear end out from under my 66. Now the backstory to this rear end is that it was built for an old S15 Jimmy that I drove in high school and we did drag racing and stuff with. It is a narrowed four nine inch. It has 35 spline axles, 350 or 355 gears, I can't remember, as well as a, uh, a locker in it. The rear end didn't quite fit under this truck. I originally was gonna mini tub it and trim some of the, the side fender or the side wall of the bed. This sidewall was bad anyway, so I was gonna have to order a new one. There's rust on the inside of it. And I didn't really have the heart to go hacking on it, being brand new and costing quite a bit. So this project was put on hold along with the fact that I went to college. So everything will fit underneath it. My only concern now is the fender well itself. I don't know how much room I'm gonna have with my tires. A friend of mine is supposed to be coming out next week, a week from today, to replace all of this, this messed up business and do some body work on it. And that will let me have a better idea. So as long as the fender wells will accommodate, then it should bolt right in, minus changing some leaf spring perches. If not, then ultimately I can trim the fender wells. I can split them right down the center. Look at that joyful patch here. Split them right down the center, bring them out, weld some metal in, problem solved. So that takes care of one part of the drivetrain that's gonna be questionable with the amount of horsepower that I'm looking for, but that's probably the only good news I have today. Also, I started doing a little trim work to this tunnel. Uh, I don't know who done this originally, but the tunnel has been raised quite a bit. And as you can tell, it's lipped here, but it meets farther on back. So I'm cutting this off with a four inch cutting disc and then I'll grind it all smooth and flush the seams out, fix all this scabbed in welding, taper this, this lip right here down and straighten this out. Get rid of these sheet metal screws. I don't know what the deal was there. scab some welds in here and left all this flange up that's what I've been trimming now I had to dress all this up grind it down smooth fill it in etc and that's not a big deal and I had to grind this smooth and, and join the seams whether it be with weld seam seal or whatever I got to do probably weld we'll see how it goes
right, so I've pretty well finished up with just dressing this mess up for tonight. But I got the big lip cut down on all of this. It's hard to see without bleaching it out, but I mean, it, it's still a ledge that I will eventually, I'll run a bead on and then smooth it down because I'm not a welder. So to make my welds look good, they're probably gonna need a grinder. That said, my welds do not look like this. Um, and I'm gonna try and work this tunnel out a little smoother because it's, it's a little crooked, but ultimately, I think I'll make it look presentable. Um, all this is cut down. Now this, this is gonna need a heavy weld and I'll have to feather this point down, this, this brace, I say, I don't know where the, where the metal meets from the floor pan to the firewall. I'll feather it down to a point. Uh, I say like this, it'll actually come out like that. Same with this side, I'll, I'll taper it down. But uh, I mean, to me, it already looks leaps and bounds better just looking at it and smoothing a lot of these top welds down. I still have to finish burning them in, but my welder is flux core and it will probably smoke right through that. It did on the 66. I tried to weld rocker panels in on it and it took me probably two weeks off and on to get them to where they were presentable and right. I don't want to go through that with this car. So um, I guess now I have to price the gas to convert it in the different wire and uh, try and get it going. Worst case scenario, my buddy Jason, a week from today or tomorrow, will be out to do the fenders and I'll, uh, I'll see about maybe trying to borrow his welder for a little while to do this because I have other patches I have to fix. I intend on trying to fill this stuff in and just put under dash, well, I'll leave these, obviously, but under dash AC, I'll probably fill this in. I don't really know what goes there, to be honest. It's going to take some research. Uh, just like the Nomad, it's shaved, and there's a kit that puts the windshield wipers under the dash, and the vintage heat and air that goes under the dash doesn't need all this mess on the firewall, so I'm going to try and shave as much as I can. Um... I guess the next video to follow is probably going to be us doing the fenders. That's going to be a big job. That's going to be probably a one or two day job. Uh, Got to mock it up, cut them out, weld the new radius fender wells in, and then fix all the messed up body work back there. Now, obviously, Jason's going to be spearheading that one, but I'll uh, I'll be helping and, and learning as I go because I can do body work. It's uh, very meticulous for me. I'm not fast at it versus Jason can just throw it on there and wick it off, and it's done and smooth. He, he's sharp at it. So we'll... uh. We'll get this turned out hopefully in the next two weeks and be ready to do some finish welding and bondo within the next month and get it ready to paint from there. I don't know. Thanks for watching.